<laughs> We're recording. Well, start it off. Um, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Michael Arias, and I am with OPEC St. Louis Central. I am here with uh, Scott as well. Uh, Seely is one of my head coach. So, hello, Amanda, Angie, and Dallas. Thanks for having us on. And uh, Keith, thanks for letting us kind of speak to your team. Um, kind of crazy stuff. I know that um, probably just a little gist of it is you guys are kind of on your computers and at, at your desk and talking to people and, and kind of busy. And, and uh, a lot of those times we uh, kind of get caught up and forget to, to do the things we need to do to take care of ourselves. But um, I'm just going to let Scott kind of roll here. And like I said, we'll try to make it a little bit personal, get a little bit of backstory on each of you and, and just kind of answer really any questions that you guys have about health or things that you guys kind of struggle with. So uh, think about those things, whether you're at work or at home, especially now within like kind of this uh, shelter in place and whatever your comfort levels are and, and uh, beliefs in that are, uh, we're here to help. So take it away, Scott. All right. Uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of my background. Um, I've been in the fitness game for about 19 years now. Um, cut my teeth as a personal trainer at 24 hour fitness in Colorado. Um, worked there for about a year, then was uh, in and out of it for a couple years as a personal trainer. Um, kind of doing my own thing, training clients on the side, training clients at their house, um, worked at a couple other places. Um, really, really didn't, I don't know, fit the mold, what they were looking for. I was always kind of searching for, you know, that next level thing. Um, uh, so after doing that for about uh, 13 years or so, I decided to go out on my own and uh, open my own gym. Um, in uh, Robinson, Illinois, little town on the eastern edge of Illinois, east central Illinois. Um, not a very big town, but uh, I saw a, a need to open it, so I went for it. Um, started off doing uh, group training style stuff, um, and that was okay. Uh, it really didn't fit the itch, though, that I had. So um, I'd been following James Fitzgerald, who is the CEO of OPEX for a long time, and uh, his stuff really resonated with me where, you know, fitness is dependent upon the individual, not one size can fit all. Uh, so I was kind of missing that in my business and uh, I decided to pull the trigger and go all in on the OPEX education and CCP um, and switch my gym over to uh, the OPEX model. Um, it went all right for about a year and a half, but the interest just wasn't there. So, um, I knew this is where I wanted to be in the um, individual working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I looked for OPEX gyms in the area and Mike was the closest one. So I reached out to Mike and said, hey, uh, I believe in what OPEX stands for. And uh, if you're willing, I'd be willing to help. And about what, four, five months later, pulled the trigger moved to St. Louis and uh, we're rolling with OPEC St. Louis Central right now. So um, that's my background. Yeah. And as Keith? you, as you know, Keith, oh. that, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you, you always want people smarter than you on your team, you know, as, as, as strange as that sounds, but you got to surround yourself with, uh, with good people and, and uh, you're doing that. And uh, I feel the same way with Scott joining our team and, and uh, things like that. Did, uh, what, did, what did Elon Musk say? He said something like, uh, I didn't go to Harvard, but I, uh, I have people on my team that did, you know, so kind of stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, so I guess we'll kind of go around. Um, let's go around the table. And, and, Keith, we'll save you for last. I know all about you. Oh, and your geez. team knows all about you. Scott pretty much knows all about you. So, um, Dallas, let's go ahead and start with you. Just a uh, little bit, a little bit about yourself, background. Uh, if you're struggling with anything now um, with the uh, quarantine or work or any questions, so take it away. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I guess I've got a master's degree in student personnel administration from Concordia University in Wisconsin. 
um, that I don't utilize, obviously selling insurance. Um, my wife is from Jefferson County, uh, Herculaneum. So we moved here about nine years ago, kind of bounced around from gig to gig in the financial banking world, mortgage, uh, and then caught on with Keith here. But uh, I also coach high school football down here at Herculaneum. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty good. 14. Hadn't really been that effect, affected us that much here um, with us having that ability to work remotely. My wife works from home as it is as well. So it's not really anything that's affected us other than having the kiddo at the home on the daily basis with the schools being canceled out. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, business as usual for the most part. Right on. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Angie, you want to go ahead and go? Sure. Um, I'm uh, a wife and a mom. My uh, kids are, I have a 19, a son that's just about 19 here in the next couple of weeks uh, and a daughter that's a junior in high school. Um, uh, and, you know, my background, I spent 22 years in the airline industry. I was a human resources person, primarily benefits administration. Um, I, uh, as a result of mergers, um, I ended up uh, taking severance and uh, was a stay home mom uh, for a number of years. Um, I ended up joining a team of people and I am a, a Juice Plus uh, distributor. So I um, am very focused on the idea of health uh, and know that you can be physically fit, but that doesn't mean that you're healthy. Um, and I've seen that in a lot of cases. Um, I connected with Keith and somehow I got into the <laughs> insurance industry. And Conj into it somehow. He's, he's yeah. a smooth talker, he is. Yeah, he is a smooth talker for sure. But <laughs> in August, uh, you know, sort of a career change. Um, in terms of being quarantined, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely been um, challenging. Um, my son was, uh, goes to school at the University of Kentucky, and um, we went to pick him up last week for spring break. That wasn't planned. A trip that he had planned was canceled. We brought him home thinking he would go back and do online classes from school and sort of have a college experience. But uh, this, this past weekend, we had to uh, go to, back to Kentucky, to Lexington, and, and move him out. Completely uh, out, are, yeah. Yeah, so um, we are now, he started online classes today. Uh, over the weekend, we have essentially created four workstations <laughs> because uh, my husband's also working from home. He's extremely busy. And... Um, and yeah, and, and so, you know, we're all just getting used to now, you know, being, being together 24 seven. And, uh, you know, my son has to get accustomed to, you know, <laughs> his routine has completely changed his, his college routine. So there's definitely been some adjustment. Um, but, you know, we're, we're trying to stay positive and, and focus on the opportunity to just spend quality time together. I mean, our lives have been crazy. You know, my kids play sports and a lot of our life has been crazy running around. And, and uh, so we, we're just taking a pause now and really just focusing on being a family. So mm -hmm. do you have uh, younger kids as well? Nope. I One just have, you no, know, I have, uh, I have a, my daughter's 17 and my son. Okay. Just, there will be my gotcha. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Angie. Uh, Amanda. Hi. Hey, how are you guys? Doing all right. Uh, good. Um, well, I guess there's not really a whole lot to me. I recognize you I from were... ICAG probably, right? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, okay. Tim Jackson. Great. Okay, night. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm an ICAGer. I love that, and I miss my people. I miss being able to hug everyone, but... Um, Zoom calls have really helped, <laughs> but sure. um, I worked retail for like 15 years and then and, uh, started working insurance, didn't want to go into insurance, 
had a friend's mom that uh, kind of got me into it. She's like, come visit. Within 20 minutes, I was hired. Um, but I am starting my own event planning company on top of the insurance thing to kind of do what I like to do. So um, looking at, as of right now, looking at uh, surgery to fix a heart defect that I was born with in April. And then in May looking to, which I haven't told anybody in this group yet, so this will be fun, looking to have the closing on my house done. Um, so we had, yeah, we had a contract call through and then the next day somebody, somebody put a contract. So, uh, that's me. Oh, Mike, you're muted. There you go. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, Keith, everyone knows about you, but just give us the cliff notes, man. <laughs> uh, born in upstate New York, moved to St. Louis, got into insurance, and the rest is history. Right on. Um, well, again, like I said, like we're uh, we're all faced with some uh, crazy stuff, being kind of quarantined and kind of having uh, ritual and and uh, habits, you know, things that were were kind of normal, kind of put on pause, and and. Uh, Scott and I are kind of dealing with that with our clients and, and just realizing that uh, there's more to life than just outside of the gym and things like that. So we're here to kind of answer any questions that you guys have about as far as like um, rhythm and lifestyle things. So um, Scott, I know you probably have some things that you kind of want to ask and we'll do the same thing. We'll just kind of ask a question and go around and go from there. Sound good? Yeah. Um, what what is your guys's connection to fitness um not fitness just like in a physical way but like also in a mental way um like i said we're fitness is more than you know just working out it's it's uh it's your mental fitness as well um and things do go on a rhythm and this whole event is a rhythm disruptor um i'm dealing with sleep issues right now um, so I can tell that, you know, it's weighing, it's weighing on my, my mental, not only my physical capacity, but my mental capacity as well. So it's kind of, I wanted to see what your guys' uh, connection to fitness was. And if you do have a connection, is it, is it, is it tough? Anyone? Sure. I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, go, ahead. Okay. go ahead, Dallas, you go. Uh, I was going to say, we, uh, so my wife and I, back in January, we started a kind of like that 75-day challenge deal um, just to get better on working out on a more regular basis, but then also just eating healthier as a whole. So we didn't do like a specific diet, but it was just, um, you know, eating better, getting rid of some of the bad foods around. So the biggest issue has been the want to snack as opposed to being at an office where you can control that a little more. When I'm at home, I can just go and grab something to snack on it. So from a fitness standpoint, the biggest mental hurdle has been not going and grab like a chips, a bag of chips and some salsa or something because you're sitting in the house waiting to grab something. So, um, but outside of that, you know, it's been, we've gotten ourselves in a good routine. So those things haven't mattered as much because of that. Yeah, routine is huge. Um, that's what we preach at OPEX is uh, uh, that rhythm, um, getting into a rhythm, making things routine where at first it may seem like it's a hassle. You have to focus on it. But after that, it just becomes like breakfast, something you do every day. Um, so getting into those good routines, those making them habit um, just takes the thinking out of it. It sounds like you got how's it how's it working for you guys? Oh, we're, it's been pretty good. I, I lost 21 pounds. Uh, nice. doing it. I went from 197 to 176, um, oh, yeah. which was a lot of just like face and neck and little, little belly fat. I got a little belly fat left to go, but, um, but really it's, it's just been, it's been good in regards to just like not having the, the crap around the house. Um, portion control. That's kind of probably my biggest problem is, when I eat, I just eat until I'm just 
completely bloated as opposed to just eating to satisfy the need of eating food. So that's kind of become more of our routine is just, under, you know, understanding portion control, eating healthier things. Um, getting, now, Keith kind of brought in, ruined that this weekend with all those goodies from White Box Catering that we weren't able to take <laughs> to. So thanks a lot, Keith. Appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, it's it's really just, you know, we, we cut out alcohol for about – I made it 45 days, no alcohol. And, and then that had to come to an end, just getting busy doing stuff. Um, but it was a good start just to kind of get that extra push, to kind of cut off some of the things that we needed to, to cut off. And once again, it always comes back to routine. Um, so it's and a, then was that, was that the 75 hard challenge, Dallas? Yeah, so that was the no cheat days. Yeah. You know, everything like that. So, and we how, would, really how did that – Go ahead. We were really good about the 45 day mark was when we had some friends that had moved back from Ohio and we went to visit them. So then we kind of had a little bit of a cheat meal and had some beverages and stuff. But at that point, it became more about, hey, we've set a precedent for ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. So I was working out probably five, six days a week, if you included like the doubles that I was able to get in. Um, I, that was I my next question. Yeah, I opened the weight room for our football players so mm -hmm. over high school. So I'd get over there at about 540 in the morning and open the weight room and just lift with the kid. And then oh, yeah. we'd go to the MCA and do like an evening class, you know, cardio mm -hmm. type classes or whatnot. So that part's gotten a little more difficult because obviously now those things are shut down. So it's figuring mm -hmm. out something to do at home and finding videos. Yeah. So for me, I just pop in the old P90X tapes. Uh, for sure good overall you know but now it's with the quarantine it's gone down to more like four or five days a week as opposed to the five to six i was getting before yeah and what do you think would be your um so the, the your main focus would be like trying to eliminate the snacking correct is that what you said yeah yeah and so what do what do your meals look like as far as uh time of day and how many meals a day so when I was in my full routine, kind of before the quarantine stuff started, I'd get home from working out and it would be four eggs, uh, like fried medium. Um, and then around 1030, I would do a protein shake. And then lunch would usually be, you know, like a chicken breast with broccoli and carrots, or my wife makes like this broccoli cauliflower casserole thing. Um, and then middle afternoon, 2.30 or so, it would be like a fruit, so like an apple or a banana, some strawberries, um, and then maybe grab a couple of almonds every once in a while just to have something to crunch into it. And then Sounds dinner boring. Would be, yeah, <laughs> <we're> boring. <laughs> but once you get over the hunger, it, it became pretty easy. Um, and so my question is, is so when did the, the snacking cravings kind of kick back in? At what point? in that or how long ago uh, about the time that we went on kind of like this quarantine from the office and being at home to where that thing becomes accessible yeah you know so then you know because we still i've got a four-year-old and a six-year-old so we still keep you know snack items around the house for them or whatnot oh right i know so especially like like tortilla chips so like tortilla chips and salsa that's my like biggest weakness. So now yeah. I'll find myself to grab a couple of tortilla chips, dip it in some salsa. Just replace the salsa with guacamole. Do you like guacamole? Well, yeah, and we keep avocados. <laughs> in. I put avocados in everything now. So we're always yeah. cutting up avocados and doing that. Um, so, but yeah, I, I caught myself last last week doing it a lot. So now this week I'm trying to be more conscious of it and avoid those yeah. temptations and get back in that routine. So it's not because you're actually hungry. It's just because it's there. Kinda, yeah. yeah. Kind of grazing, yeah. bored. Yep. Yep. Every Absolutely. time you want to go grab a snack, just rip out like 15, 20 push-ups. And then that's, that's it'll, a good idea, actually. It'll, it'll go away. That's a good <laughs> just idea. rip out yeah. some – just do 30 sit-ups. I could definitely do some more sit-ups. So this is – but, like, it just it's just like a little, you know, switch of the mentality. So it's just like little things like that to where – you know, um, it's not going to be a super, you know, long prescription. It's like, Hey, when that happens, like do this instead and just kind of like, boop, or, like take a nice hard, right. And then do something physical. And then yeah. that, that trigger in the brain might kind of dissipate. So that might be one thing to kind of, to kind of focus on to help yeah, out. Try and drink, um, try and drink some water too. 
Yeah, and, um, I don't know what your water intake. Uh, sometimes um, thirst uh, can seem like hunger. So sometimes when your body's really screaming out for water, you get the hunger thing too. So you might try drinking a big old glass of water when you get that urge and ride it out for a bit. Okay. That can help. Right on. Thanks for sharing, Dallas. Yeah, sure. Uh, Go ahead, see. Angie. Uh, well, um, so yeah, I used to be a very, you know, when I was a stay home mom, I, I was a very consistent person in terms of exercise. I'd go to classes, um, with, uh, other women that were home during the day. And, um, and then the I started 30 crowd, right? Yeah, actually, it was a nine o'clock class, and there that was go. pretty. Yeah. that was pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. And then I started working, and I completely got out of the habit. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, um, honestly, I, I other than walking, you know, going outside and taking long walks, I really haven't done anything um, consistently. And I know, you know because of my age, I, I not I need not only cardio, but I do need, need strength training. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just haven't done it. And honestly, it's, it's, it's laziness. Like I know, you know, it's laziness on my part. And um, so, yeah. Is it I that just, you don't, is it that you don't have the motivation or the need, the, the ability? No, well, no, I, 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 I have the ability, like I have, op I have opportunities, you know, like Dallas said, you know, I, I have access to P90X. I could, I could get into some routine like that. Um, I now have one of the uh, women on our Juice Plus team. It's a fitness instructor and we have a web, we have a Facebook page for our, a lot of our customers and our prospects. And she's doing classes now. Um, on that Facebook page every day. And, you know, so I got on this morning for 30 minutes to support her, but I, I just watched her. I didn't even get up because I had a commitment at nine o'clock and, you know, so that was just lazy. I'm like, okay, I can, I know I can go back. I can go back and do it. But the reality is, and I know myself, the longer the day goes, the less likely I am to get it done. I am one of those people and I am a morning person. I just need to get back in the habit, get up, go in the basement, get it done. And I just, you know, I just haven't done it. Um, so, and now, you know, it's just easy. It's easy to be lazy. <laughs> so I, oh, yeah. I, I, gotta, I gotta get back in the habit because um, I, I know how important it is to my health. Um, you know, mentally, uh, not that I never struggle, but, you know, I, I mean, from a spiritual aspect, I find my, my, my strength, emotional strength all comes from the Lord and just being in God's word and, um, and, and just, just really, I'm, I, I'm in prayer groups and now we're doing it on zoom and, you know, that's where my encouragement comes from. And, uh, I, you know, I know that, yeah, I'm, a, I feel like I'm really unsure, uh, a firm, a firm foundation there. So, you know, that's not an area of struggle for me now. You know, my family on Sundays, we, we, you know, we've been able to, um, be in our basement and we hook, hook up online and we do church online. And, and it's been, it's been amazing for us to have that experience actually over the last two weeks, two, two okay. weeks. But, good. you know, so emotionally good. Physically, good. I have a lot of work I need to do. You, you say you went on walks, correct? I love to walk. You know, the weather has been, it has been just so, you know, so I struggle with getting out there when the weather, you know, isn't nice. Mm -hmm. And you know, I used to be a runner. Um, and I, I don't know that now I could, it's been, a, it's been a few years since I've done that, but, um, yeah, I just, what kind of classes, what kind of classes were they, Angie, that you used to take? Um, 
Well, the group class. There was there was a couple different ones. It was cardio, kickboxing, mm -hmm. uh, ba and and basic strength. And um, what do you mean by basic was, strength? Well, it was like you know there were you know that's what the class is called, but. Mm -hmm. You know, it's lunges, it's timed, like you do, you do something for 45 seconds mm -hmm. and then, you know, and some of it involves weights, uh, some of it, okay. you know. I'm, I got it. I'm, pic like, I'm picturing you doing it right now. I got it. Program. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how long ago was that? Oh, that was the last time I did one of those classes was um, in July of 2019. Mm -hmm. Is so it something I you want to get back to? Class. Pardon me? Is it something you want to get back to? Yes, I just need to, you know, mm -hmm. I just really need to, I, well, because of the time, I can't do those particular classes. So I need mm -hmm. to replace it. And, and the problem is, is the other time that the person I know that offers the, the class is at 530. And that is not, that's horrible time for me. You know, I, I make dinner for my or PM? family. A PM. PM. Yeah. And that just doesn't work because I'm making dinner for my family. Or, you know, if my daughter played sports, it, you know, in high school, it was games. So that's just not a good time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, you know, I just, I need to figure it out. And with summer coming or, or spring sort of, I guess it's spring now, it's a little bit, it should be a little easier for me after work to get out and, and walk for 45 minutes. We well, said you're a morning person, right? Yes. Yes. How about getting up and going dark. for a walk in the morning? Yeah. It's getting lighter a little earlier. Yeah. And yeah, that's probably really what I need to do. And I used to walk with a friend um, and I shouldn't say, you know, after August, there were mornings I would get up at six and go. So I know that I, I, I should probably get back into that now. Um, the, hopefully the weather will get a little nicer. Yeah, the, the hard part's starting, right? Yeah, no, that's, that's, the, that's exactly right. It's yeah, the hard, the, hard part part is, the hard part is starting. And it goes back to the rhythm thing we talk about. Like, once you get into that rhythm, um, your body kind of resets and gets gets um, accustomed to that rhythm. So it's easier to get up and get that walk in or get up and get that P90X whatever in. Just starting and creating that rhythm, your body will adjust and it'll be a lot easier. Right. Um, uh, Angie, do you have a uh, set daily calendar for yourself for like daily tasks and at this time I do this, this time I do this, and this time I do this? I do have a calendar, and it is a daily calendar, um, mm -hmm. and I am very sort of, I am schedule-oriented, and I am task, mm -hmm. I am a task-oriented person because I love to check things off a list, uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> I have not put exercise in on that list. It sounds uh, like once you write it down, you'll do it. That is probably true. It is true, because so I... Squeeze in, squeeze in 30 minutes and write it down and get it done. The most right. optimal time for your schedule. You're absolutely right. And I, you know, my husband, you know, he was up this morning and he went down on the treadmill and I laid in bed. <laughs> so I could have, I mean, we only have one treadmill, but. You know, hey, well, here's the I, thing you guys can do with that is, is, you know, you can do your intervals. He goes one minute on, uh, one minute rest, one minute work. And you guys can alternate on the treadmill, adjusting speeds yeah. as needed. What's super simple yeah. is you could just go for 20 minutes, which equivalates to 10 minutes of work, just back and forth at your own speeds. He's on for a minute while you rest. You're on for a minute while he rests. Give that a try. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, we'll keep on moving. Uh, Amanda. Okay, finally got it unmuted. Sorry, guys. Um, so I used to work out a lot. Um, I would work five to six days a week, um, one to two hours, depending on what we were doing. A lot of times we would walk around uh, the neighborhood for about an hour before we would go and do our regular uh, workouts, which was great. And then I got in an accident and messed up my back, couldn't bend over, couldn't work out. 
Um, once I started feeling better from that, um, I got when was What year was this? What that year was, was 18. 18. 2018. Okay. Um, once I started getting better from that and was able to get back to my workout routine, um, I went for a couple of weeks, hurt myself again, um, had to end up canceling my membership because I just wasn't getting any better. Um, and then what kind of membership? Out, were, you, were you doing classes? It was, uh, or? To exist. No, huh? no. Um, my boyfriend at the time and I were going through, we were doing mostly weightlifting. So we had a whole schedule. Each day was different part of the body. Um, and we would do cardio first and then go into weightlifting and then we would do a cool down. I'm sorry. We have three dogs here and they're all just going to go crazy. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just glad all of our dogs aren't going nuts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, I loved that. I missed that. Um, right now my doctor says nothing, um, until after after I'm cleared after the surgery. So I, in August of this year, I found out that I had, I went into the hospital because I couldn't hardly breathe, um, had double pneumonia and they had originally diagnosed me with um, tacticamo cardiomyopathy, which is known as broken heart syndrome and congestive heart failure. My heart was only functioning at 30%. Um, three months of treatments and trying to figure out what was going on. It was still at 30%. Um, they got an electrophysiologist involved and come to find out I have a nerve uh, that's messing with me. And it was actually a heart defect uh, that can be fixed with surgery. So surgery is April 13th. Um, they said eight to 12 weeks after that, my heart should be fully functioning. Um, and then I can start kind of getting me off of the meds that I needed before then. Um, I thought maybe it was something like, yeah, it's a defect, but what else could attribute to this? Um, and he said nothing. He said that it was just a matter of time. And he's like, there's no reason why when you were working out that you should still be as large as you are. Um, you should have been able to lose all the weight. He goes, and this is why, because you can't get your heart rate up because of this. So I'm hoping that once I'm cleared to work out again, I can actually get to where I look as healthy as my blood work shows I am. <laughs> that must have been rough going from like five to six days a week to kind of, and then the accident happened and then it kind of halted. Obviously, I mean, but yeah, so was what, yeah. um, and then once you got back to it and you tried to kind of get back in the groove, you just kept injuring yourself and, and, and that aspect. And so once yeah. that, injury happened you just kind of like hung the hat and was like I can't I can't do this anymore because of it well I, I couldn't I I couldn't afford to keep going and keep paying for the subscription when I wasn't there so mm -hmm. I went ahead right, and right. canceled it and was uh -huh. like I'll just go back when when I heal up well then this happened with my heart and my doctor's mm -hmm. like you can't do anything right now um actually as a matter of fact the other day uh Keith he surprised me and um, ended up having like, it was hilarious, but I ended up dealing with ramifications later and my entire like back and sides cramping up on me um, for an hour. Um, <laughs> Please don't tell me he had like an office challenge or something. No, no. Um, I was uh, in the office and I thought, um, I heard the door open. I thought it was the male guy there and out jumps Keith and he had forgotten that that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> so, oh, he scared you. So yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You scared me. Oh man. Yeah. It got me good. Way to go Keith. So <laughs> it's like almost a workman's comp right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? My boss scared the crap out of me. <laughs> right. Well, he got yelled at for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what would you have done if I passed out on you? <laughs> yeah. So when you, you got into your accident, you healed up and then you went back to working out again. You said you got hurt again. Did you, it was it a, did you get hurt from your accident? Did you re-aggravate yeah. that injury or was it something yeah. different? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
so what what was your injury from the accident I messed up my back really bad. Um, and but like specifically, I went to a chiropractor did, did, for it. Sorry, did you me. have like slip discs or fractured vertebrae or uh, um, spondylitis? There was spondyl some, some of my vertebrae were like real, like pushing together to where almost none of my my disc was almost non existent on an x ray. Um, compressed discs. So mm -hmm. they were working on that. Um, and then I ended up changing chiropractors because there was a whole lot of other things that they were also working on that, including saying that my heart was in perfect condition because my pulse rate was low that, and now we see that that's not the case. So, hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> you weren't work, you weren't working with a you weren't working with a trainer where you guys were just kind of going in and doing your own thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you still have issues with your back today? Oh yeah, not as bad, yeah. but yeah. Mm -hmm. I always have those since I was seventeen. I hurt my neck and shoulders when I was seventeen, and it's been an issue since then. So. Gotcha. Are there, is there anything now that you struggle with, like, I guess, being with the quarantine in 30 days and, um, you know, anything that's presented as a challenge in the, la in the past 10 days or two weeks because of all this? Well, I live out in the boonies, so I have uh, no internet. So um, uh, I'm actually have unlimited internet on my phone, thankfully. So I actually have this to where I'm doing... Um, the word hotspot um wi-fi to my laptop um so that's been that's been an interesting challenge and my parents are reminding me like okay so you can't connect right now it's not a big deal try again later um to try to keep me from getting too frustrated <laughs> yeah yeah so um because that could be an issue potentially too so yeah. Gotcha. Um, I mean, other than that, no, not really. I'm just trying to adapt as much as possible. I enjoy being home. Um, and I think my dog's really enjoying it, but <laughs> I miss my people too. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, guys. So I guess the kind of the whole and and, uh, Keith will make this about your team. Do you, unless you have anything to add. <laughs> Good to go. Okay. Um, so I guess, and the whole, I guess the whole theme of this stuff is, is, you know, what are, what are steps that we can do to kind of preserve or not better ourselves in these next kind of 30 days? Cause in the grand scheme of things, 30 days is, is not a long time. And I don't know, I was kind of making some notes about you guys and I kind of doodled this graph and I don't know if you could see it, but so Let's say here is straight across it now, right? The vertical line is day one. And so we're right here, right? And maybe some people are up top, but we're going to say we're right here for right now. And we're this horizontal line and we're just slowly graduating, slowly graduating up and up and up till this vertical line, which is day 30, right? So we've, let's just say we're, we're increasing 1% a day steadily, you know, over 30 days. 1% might be a lot, but you get the idea. Now, here is what's happening to some other people. You know, um, you know we just have to empathize. Everyone's situation is different. And not to say that this line isn't me or anybody else, but we're like, oh, yeah, things are great. Boom, day one hits. And, man, we're on a roller coaster, and we're just going down. And then we get dipped below to actual where we actually were and then pass the 30 days. And then we're like, okay, now the 30 days is up. Now we can kind of get on this upswing and guess what? You know, here's day 45, let's just say, and then boom, there's this back down on this slow decline. Right? So we want to think about being right here in this awesome, cool graph dotted line as we slowly increase day by day. Does that make sense? Everyone? Um, so it's just kind of like, oh, thanks, buddy. This is art. This is art time at home with my kids. Thanks, bro. That's a good one. 
I saw it. Thanks, buddy. Um, so that's just kind of a graph that, you know, we have to keep in mind. And what does that line represent for everybody, that, that gradual 1%, half percent a day? It could be anything, you know. Um, it could be Dallas being like, oh, I haven't snacked or I only snacked you know, one time this week in those seven days. And so it's like, okay, we're progressively getting better and better. Right. Um, for Angie, it could be like, okay, like three days a week, I woke up and did interval walking with my husband at 6am. And so it's just this gradual incline. And then, you know, for, for Amanda, it's like, okay, well, I was able to go walk my dogs every day because I was at home and they enjoyed time with me. So, you know, to where we can kind of continue this past the 30 days and just like Scott was mentioning to start off this call, rhythm and habit and just be on that slow incline because a lot of the extreme stuff and will eventually crash. And this is just, um, you know, not to knock on what you did, Dallas, what you did was extremely amazing uh, with the 75 days. But just like you said, you got to 35 and you're like, hey, man, life happened and our friends got here and we moved and we celebrated and we had a good time. And then I just kind of, okay, where are we at now? We're just kind of slowly back on that incline. Not to say it's bad or, or bad or good, but we just have to be realistic in, in, the, in the challenges um, or in the things that we kind of put in front of us every day. Um, so it's the same thing with, with just changing one little thing instead of changing everything all at once because those one little things will, will kind of um, be big changes in the end. That makes sense? Sorry, rant, rant over. Uh, <laughs> Scott, do you have anything to add? No, it's just, it's just little changes at a time. Like Mike's saying, like if you try, if you go all in, all at once, you're gonna burn out. And when you hit that burnout period, it's just things fall on the wayside, and it's really, really hard to get them back. So that's where this like quarantine state that everybody's in is kind of like a. Can, you can kind of use it as a reset, right? Pick on, pick something that you you want to uh, improve, and we got the time now. Try and improve it little by little each day, each week, and by the end of the thirty days, like Mike said, you were here, we're here now. You know, um, what are those things? I mean, you don't have to think about fitness, but like if you want to get into that rhythm, going for a walk, right? Um, springtime the sun should come out some point it's awesome to get outside and get some sun especially this time of year after we've been you know hibernating out of the sun um what else sleep sleep's a huge thing that we talk about um if you're not getting enough sleep raise your hand if you get like seven to eight solid hours of sleep a night right so that's something that everybody can try and improve on. Um, sleep hygiene, uh, going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time every morning. That's, that's key. That helps you. What's that? I was just saying buzzkill, which we all, oh. it's important, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. So nobody wants to hear it, that. It's so tough to do. It is. It is. I'm, I, like I said, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with sleep stuff here, but I still try and keep on my sleep routine. I go and lay down in my dark, cool bedroom every night at the same time, hopefully fall asleep within, you know, 20 minutes, but it's just getting into that rhythm. Um, or if you want a mental reboot, right? Try and take this next 30 days or however long we're going to be quarantined and try and have like some growth, like, personal growth, like reflect on things that you can improve in yourself and just build on that a little each day. Um, that can go a long way. And when you come out the end of this 30 days and you may have a new uh, aspect on a certain point of your life, whether it be relationships with p other people or even just a relationship with yourself, if there's things that you don't like about yourself, ask yourself why to kind of get to the bottom of that. And make amends with yourself or start taking steps to try and improve that. Um, so it's not, it's not all just about fitness, but a daily fitness thing fits in with everything else. So that's where this quarantine can kind of be like a, a good way to reconnect with yourself and things that you've gotten away from. Um, 
yeah. Does that make sense? Scary, the, the um, thinking about actually sitting down and having an honest conversation with yourself about things. It's, it's scary. But if it's scary, that means you should probably do it. So, you know, this is a perfect time to try and do something like that. Uh, yeah. Is that, what do you think, Mike? That was awesome. I got schooled. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Keith, um, Dallas, man, and Angie, thanks for your time. Uh, Keith, did you have anything to add or any questions for us? Um, appreciate appreciate you uh, allowing us to talk to your team and uh, miss seeing you at the gym. But we'll we'll be there soon enough, so we'll uh, we'll keep at it. No, any other last questions? No, thank you. Yeah, that, thank you, Mike, for doing this, and thank you for kind of talking to everybody, kind of getting their mind right, and I'll, I'll be checking in with them, just making sure everybody's do, doing good things, not, not going off the deep end. <laughs> sure. If I could, uh, so in in the OPEX world, when we when we have, uh, we'll just we could just call this kind of like a group consultation within a team, you know, so. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, NEPA, so it's like a framework that we use and we talk uh, consultations. So we kind of notice what people say, we get an explanation for why they said it, and then we prescribe something. And so, and then there's the actioning of that prescription. So if, if I were to, just for example, just a spitball, and you guys can do it if you like or not. But if us as coaches, if we were to prescribe you something, um, I would say Dallas for your uh, cravings, like Scott said, let's look at your water intake, how much water you're drinking a day, and then also uh, low sugar, because low sugar will, will really eliminate cravings, um, especially the snacking. So I don't necessarily think it's just because you're around it, in my opinion. I think it could be <laughs> hydration and, and sugars. So maybe just keep that in mind if that could be something that you can action towards um, and see how that works. Um, Angie, I think since you said that you're very write it down, check it off the list, start incorporating three times a week, maybe just start with twice a week, maybe just start with one day. Uh, do the interval walking with your husband. You know, you have one treadmill, 60 minutes rotating at your comfort level, get the blood going. If it feels good, hey, I might go 12. You know, who knows? So maybe uh, for an actioning piece, just write that down in your, <clears throat> in your, um, you know, um, daily list of things you have to do and, and all that kind of stuff. Sound good? Great. Sounds great. Thank you. And then Amanda, like uh, for you, I would think just more so, like you said, you love being home with your dogs, like, man, be outside with them, get out, you know, and you love being home. Uh, you're kind of out in the, in the, in the boondocks, you said, I think. So it's like, you got the open air. Uh, get some sunlight, you know, kind of take that in before, you know, mentally prepare for the surgery and things like that and, and think about uh, things for the future and what happens after this next 30 days, like when you will be able to move better and feel great and, you know, have zero heart issues. So um, maybe that is an actioning piece to kind of when it's a sunny day, just kind of get out there, walk dogs and throw the ball and all that stuff. So sound good. Yeah. Awesome. So that would just be like just some of the things that when we work with our clients, that's one of the lifestyle pieces, I guess you could could say. So it just kind of goes beyond, you know, push-ups and fitness and all that kind of stuff. So, but anyways, yeah. Thanks for having us, Keith. Thank you guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank, thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.